Lord, truly all we have is Christ. All we have is what he has done, what he has accomplished, and we get to celebrate that now as we participate in communion. I pray that, Jesus, you would be magnified as we do this. And, Jesus, it's always in your great name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. As we're going to be spending time in God's word, we want everyone as much as possible to have a copy of God's word in their hands. And so if you don't have a Bible, uh, the men here will be distributing Bibles. Just go ahead and raise your hand and they will make sure you get one in your hand. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 through 25. So please turn to your Bibles. Swipe on your phones, find that place. During this time of communion, we're going to take a piece of bread and a cup of juice. This piece of bread represents the body of Christ, and this cup of juice represents his blood. And we're going to take those elements, and we're going to remember Christ's death, and we're going to proclaim it. Before we do that... I do want to ask a question. What comes to your mind when you hear the words, Christ crucified, or the words, the cross of Christ? Likely, it's not the same thoughts that an unbelieving first century Jew or Gentile would have had. Crucifixion was one of the worst forms of punishment someone could undergo. It was an instrument of torture and execution. It was humiliating and shameful. In Greco-Roman culture, only the worst of society would be crucified. Traitors, criminals, degenerate slaves, and social deviants. The Jews applied crucifixion to Deuteronomy 21, verse 23, that any man who hangs on a tree is accursed of God. The mere reference to a cursed individual was offensive to a religiously minded Jew. In addition to that, they would have had additional reasons to despise and hate the cross. They had seen many of their fellow countrymen crucified by governing authorities putting down Jewish revolts. In Greco-Roman or Jewish culture, there was nothing to celebrate or remember about a cross or the individual on it. Please follow along as I read 1 Corinthians, verses 17 through 25. We'll primarily spend our time in verse 18, starting in verse 17. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not in cleverness of speech, so that the cross of Christ would not be made void. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, It is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the cleverness of the clever I will set aside. Where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God, God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For indeed, Jews ask for signs and Greeks search for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. To Jews, a stumbling block, and to Gentiles, foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Verse 18 focuses on the word of the cross. The word of the cross is the message that tells us that every single person is a sinner deserving to suffer under the wrath of God forever. This message tells us that we're completely unable to do anything about it ourselves. It tells us that it takes the very Son of God coming to earth to become a man. It tells us that he lived a perfect life that we could not live. It tells us the historical event that Jesus was condemned 
and nailed to a Roman cross. It tells us that while on that cross, he suffered under the wrath of God and died in the place of all those that would trust and believe in him. It tells us that he rose again on the third day. And it tells us that he did this so that his people can go to heaven and be in God's presence, worshiping him forever. Verse 18 tells us that that message, that that good news is foolishness. The word here for foolishness is where we get the word for moron. This message is moronic. It is folly. It is utter foolishness. To the Jew who expected their Messiah to come in earthly power and splendor, to be told that actually their Messiah was going to suffer and die on a Roman cross would have been too much to overcome. To the Greek, to be told that we're sinners and this man who was executed as a criminal was actually God providing atonement for their sin, again, was too much to overcome intellectually. All of this is foolishness. But verse 18 tells us that it is foolishness to those who are perishing. Those that believe the message of the cross is foolishness are already in the process of being destroyed. Those that are destined for destruction under God's wrath cannot rightly understand this message. Continuing in verse 18, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Paul includes himself with these Corinthian believers to explain that the word of the cross is the power of God. The word of the cross is the means by which God is displaying his power. Notice that being saved is passive. God is the one doing the saving. He is the one who justifies, he is the one who sanctifies, and ultimately he is the one who glorifies. Being saved is something that is unachievable through human effort. He's doing it in a way that confounds the human mind, and he's doing it so that no man can boast about his wisdom or his achievements, but can only boast in Christ's accomplishments. There are two categories of people, those that are perishing and those that are being saved. Do you believe the word of the cross? Have you come to the end of yourself and your own efforts and your own wisdom and turned to Christ? If not, by your own admission, you know, we're glad that you're here, but we're going to ask when those elements, when that cup and that juice come by, that you would just simply pass them by. Perhaps you explicitly believe that this message is foolish. Perhaps you just... You just don't get it. You can't wrap your mind around it. Maybe you don't think you need to be saved from something. God's word tells us, tells you that you are perishing, that you will be destroyed and ultimately suffer under God's wrath forever. But it doesn't need to be this way. You have the opportunity to turn from your own efforts and your own wisdom and turn to Christ and trust in him alone. Please speak with me or any of the other pastors or the person that brought you. We would love, we would love to discuss Jesus with you. Believers, the cross of Christ is not something that we despise. It is something we celebrate. That the God who we've rebelled against would send his son to bear the wrath that we deserve in our place so that we would be reconciled to him and be with him forever, that is amazing. Remember what Christ has accomplished on the cross. When when your hearts are prepared, please go ahead and take communion on your own.